So, as you might expect within CEA, the internal and the exam will actually have heaps of word problems for you. Um, and that's just what we have to learn to deal with. So, this video in particular is looking at other words for geometric sequences. Basically, how's, how do they word it and how do you go about solving it? And these are often things like exponential problems, growth, decay, interest. And for those of you guys who have done the graphing standard earlier, you might remember trying to find um, the amount of interest in a bank or somebody's paying off a loan, things like that. And it's kind of the same process. If we're going to find R for an increase in problem, we need to make sure that R is equal to 1 plus the percentage decrease divided by 100, or percentage increase divided by 100, which is basically converting it to a decimal. So you can do that in your head if you want. But as an example, if I said increase by 10% in a problem, R would then be equal to 1 plus 10 over 100, which is equal to 1.10. Now if you can convert percentage to decimals in your head automatically, then it would just be 1 plus whatever the decimal is. And likewise, if you have a decreasing problem, it's going to be 1 minus the percentage decrease converted to a decimal. So for instance, if I said decrease by 27%, R would be equal to 1 minus 27 over 100, or you can do that in your head, and you would get yourself down to 0 0.73, which is what R would be equal to. So these can come up as problems both for just finding like the 20th term, but also for things like finding sums. So you have to read the problem really carefully. I'll go through a few examples. I might break this up into two videos. We'll see how it goes. Um, Haley's company sells custom garments. Her sales have been increasing exponentially. So increasing and exponential. That gives me a big hint that it's going to be a geometric sequence. It is increasing and they've given me the percentage there. So geometric sequences, another thing to think about is that it's often given to you as a percentage. So if I need to find R first, well, let's read the rest of the problem. Increasing exponentially by 17% a month. So every month she increases by 17%. If she sold 64 garments in August, how many garments can she expect to sell in November? Okay, so lots of information in here, but we've got to figure out what's going on. So first thing I might remind us of is actually our formula. We have Tn is equal to A times R to the power of n minus 1. So we need to know the first thing, and we need to know the ratio, and then we need to know n to be able to figure out what's going on here. So I might go with finding r first, because I can actually get that. Um, increasing by exponentially, so I'm increasing by 17%. r is going to be equal to 1 plus 17 divided by 100, or 1 plus 0 0.17. Now I have to think about how this works out as a sequence. If you're not sure how many months we're looking at passing here, we could look at abbreviations here. Our first term here in August, she sells 64 garments. So August, September, October, November. So that's the first, second, third, and fourth term. So if we're assuming here that we're starting this process looking at August, and they haven't given us any other information to say we haven't done that, we, we aren't going to do that. We're going to assume we start in August, that's the first term. So that tells me that A is equal to 64, because it's the first term. And N, in this case, because I'm looking for November, N, that's the fourth term, 1, 2, 3, 4. So N will equal 4. So I've got R, A, and N. I can use my formula. So. I'm looking for the number of garments she's going to sell in November, so I'm not looking for a total, I'm looking for the actual number of garments for just the month of November. That's going to be the fourth month, or the fourth term. A is equal to 64, and I'm going to times it by R, which is 1.17, to the power of, and N here is 4, because November is the fourth month in the sequence, so N minus 1, 4 minus 1, and that's going to be equal to, when you plug it into your calculator, 102.5 garments. But it doesn't make sense that she'll have made half a garment or sold half a garment, so we need to think about rounding here. 
if she's looking at the number she sold, if she sells half a garment, that doesn't really count as a whole garment here, so I'd probably round it to say 102 garments. So making sense here that it's whole numbers. So again, I notice that it's an increasing exponentially by a percentage. That tells me automatically geometric sequence, so I know I'm going to use my geometric sequence formula. And then I'm going to check, am I finding a sum or an individual amount? Here, how many can she expect to sell in November? That's individually. I'm finding my R value by using the plus 17 percent. And I'm figuring out what term I'm talking about by diagramming it out as a sequence for myself, August being the first one, September, October, and then November, so n is equal to 4. So the word problems can get quite tricky, but if you're careful about it, you should be able to get your way through it. Uh, next example here. Um, the number of birds migrating past Spencer's house is decreasing each year by 35 percent. So decreasing each year by 35 percent, because it's decreasing by a percentage, I'm going to assume here that we're talking about a geometric sequence, and it's decreasing, it's going down. If this year he saw 1,400 birds, how many can he expect to see in 10 years' time? So again, we're just going to start the sequence with the information I've been given, so I'm going to assume that this year is the first year. So. 1 being this year, he's got 1,400 birds, and I want to see in 10 years' time, so dot, 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 out to 10, how many birds is he going to see? So that would be t sub 10. In the 10th term, what's going to be the value? So my f initial value here, a, is going to be equal to 1,400, because that's for the first year. R, I can figure out because it's decreasing by a percentage, so it's going to be 1 minus 35 over 100, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.65. And the next thing that I need then is n for my formula, and n here is in the tenth year, so n is equal to 10. n is equal to 10. So again, my formula, t sub n is equal to a times r to the power of n minus 1. Plugging in what I know, in the tenth term, the value of it should be equal to a, which is 1400, times r, which is 0 0.65, to the power of n, which is 10, minus 1, all in brackets. Plug it in, and you'll get 28.99. Now that's pretty close um, to 29, so I might run this to 29 sea bir or birds here. I know in the previous example I said 102.5 wasn't enough to round it up because it's only half a garment, but 0.99 of a bird is pretty close to a whole bird, so I might just round it here. But if you rounded it to 28, that would be okay as well, because you're looking for the whole numbers in 10 years' time. So. Yeah, it's decreasing every year by 35 percent, so if this year he sees 14, 1,400 birds, in 10 years he's only going to see 29 birds, so that's pretty sad. So clearly in this case they need to do some conservation to make sure that he gets more birds going by and not such a decrease every year. So I'm going to break this video up into two, just because it's getting on in length. So those are two examples of word problems where you're looking for a certain term, like the 10th term or the 20th term with a geometric sequence. The next two we'll be looking at, um, well, we'll look at them in the next video.